This is not a mistletoe. If you're hanging this at Christmas, I gotta say, you're doing it wrong. For the record, this is a mistletoe, not this. Funny that this is here, because this is what people often put up and sell as mistletoe. Oh, mistletoe. I hope that was an easy one, but there's a whole lot of other things that make mistletoe very cool. Every year around Christmas, we partake in the unusual activity of hanging an incredibly toxic parasitic plant above the doorway, and then we kiss under it. I've always taken it for granted. It does seem odd though. Now as a biologist, I learned they are toxic and parasitic, which makes the tradition even more unusual. Then, however, I started researching mistletoe, and I found that everything I knew about mistletoe was wrong. Now, I always intended in this video to share some of the basic misconceptions of mistletoes, but what I didn't realize is that I would become such a fan of mistletoe that I would start propagating them myself. To help me tell this story, I found a tree that was around when I was a kid that just so happens to be full of mistletoe. This is the middle school that I grew up going to, so all of these trees, or at least a lot of them, were here 30 years ago when I was in middle school, and now a lot of them have mistletoe. A lot of people are not used to looking for mistletoe, but they're really easy to see in the winter, like on this tree, when all of the leaves should be dead, but there are little bunches of green on them. Well, that's the mistletoe. Check out this mistletoe. Look at these amazing little mistletoes. There's hundreds of them in this tree, all different mistletoe plants. A plant that never touches the ground. Now, I really think it is quite magical when you stop and look at them. To help me make sure I was getting it all right, I reached out to the mistletoe guy, Dr. Dave. Most people think of mistletoe as just one thing. Oh yeah, I know about mistletoe. It's this Christmas thing, it's in Europe, there's white berries, isn't it poisonous? Um, and that's all true. That is the one species of mistletoe that's found in Western Europe. But there's about 1,700 species of them and they're found pretty much everywhere woody plants are found. Every isolated oceanic island has mistletoe, mostly endemics. They're in high mountains, they're in dry deserts, they're in coniferous trees, they're in tropical rainforests, they're everywhere. And mistletoes are the parasitic plants that do three things. So they're half parasites, they're green plants, but they also take water and nutrients from a host. They attach to their plant above ground, not below ground, and they're woody. That's a mistletoe. So the take home there is that if you're watching this video, you probably have mistletoe around you. Also, mistletoe doesn't describe a particular species of plant. It describes a life strategy, a way of living. And it seems as if this life strategy has evolved separately five times. And that means they don't all share the same toxins. Now I'm here in Texas with the American mistletoe. Now, I've always heard they were toxic, but it seems not bad enough that I couldn't taste one. But what I found so unusual is that it tasted very good. Wow. That is very sweet. And this made me second guess everything I knew about the toxins. There's very few toxic mistletoes. So Viscum album, the European mistletoe, is nasty uh, for us. Very few other mistletoes do. And if you go around the world and talk to indigenous people, First Nations people, mistletoe features prominently in foods they eat. It's like a snack and kids love it. The fruits are sweet. They're quite high in carbohydrates. There's some of them have um, lots of soluble lipids in them as well. It has almost all essential amino acids you need. So if you're stuck on a desert island and there's lots of mistletoe there, you'll be okay. It seems like a lot of how I view mistletoe has come from my European heritage. Viscum album from Europe is quite toxic the leaves and stem even more than the berries. And this is why it's generally not recommended to have them accessible to babies in the house, for instance. This toxicity is involved in many of the legends too. As one Norse legend goes, Thor's mom Frigg cast powerful magic to make sure no plant grown on earth could be used as a weapon to kill her son. Oh, not Loki or Thor, the other one. Unfortunately, they overlooked the mistletoe because mistletoes, as we've learned, don't grow on earth, so to speak. They spend their whole life cycle in trees. Loki, being sneaky and taking advantage of this loophole, made a spear out of the toxic mistletoe, which eventually killed his brother. Luckily for the story I heard, more magic brought him back from the dead and Frigg paradoxically declared the mistletoe a symbol of love and promised to kiss anyone that passed underneath. And I will stop here because to be honest, every one of the translations of this tale feels like we're playing a game of telephone. They're all slightly different. It's hard to know exactly where the legend came from. Probably a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of songs that came out of the 1700s. 
Your take home should probably be that there are legends that do clearly point to the toxins of the mistletoe. But remember, toxin is only in the dose. There are also a lot of traditional uses that point to using them as medicine. There's a lot of those compounds have really high biological activity. They've got high anti-tumor activity. So there's a whole science of using compounds derived from European mistletoe for cancer therapy. And it's not, you know, woo-woo crystals. If, if you trust the herbs, it'll make you better. It's actual peer-reviewed science. There's a lot of work that goes into that in Europe. It's the most widely used treatment to combat many forms of cancer. The main compounds working for this cancer treatment are the lectins in the mistletoe. Bigger perspective, you know how cancer cells are often problematic because they continue to replicate when they shouldn't? Well, it seems these lectins are able to reactivate the programmed cell death mechanism that really helps cancer cells grow unchecked. And thus, this treatment can work really well to target cancer cells over the healthy cells. If you're really interested in this, much of the work is in Germany and Austria, so if you live there, you might actually have a one-up on the rest of us. Now, getting back to the America mistletoe in front of me, it contains forotoxin. In high enough doses, that toxin could cause death. But in over 1,700 exposures reported to poison control, there were only minor effects, if anything. Meaning, this plant here just is not as toxic as most people think. And now, you may be wondering if you should or shouldn't have mistletoe in your yard. I think we're going to eliminate some mistletoe that's affecting our tree. After all, we did just establish that it has traits of a parasite, and nobody likes a parasite. The average person struggles with the concept of a parasite that isn't necessarily bad, which I find kind of weird, because we watch documentaries and you have lions, and killer whales, we, we love them, they're predators, but we don't beat them up for it, that's just how they make a living. And parasites are no different, there are more species of parasite on Earth than there are non-parasites, so they're kind of a successful strategy. And parasitic plants as a group, it's evolved 12 times independently. Huge diversity, crazy diversity. Um, and yeah, they get a lot of bad press because they're seen as these pesty things and they're not. Cutting some mistletoe. That's the other big thing. It's like, oh, I've got mistletoe on my property. You know, how do I get rid of it? Like what's, it's it, it's obviously a problem. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's, it, it's fine. Just leave it where it is. It's cool. And if you want to see cool stuff around your property, spend some time around your mistletoe and you will see cool stuff. And maybe at this stage you're like, I still want to get rid of the mistletoe. What do I do? Well, this is a stem. This is a mistletoe. I wanted to show you in closer detail what's actually happening. What you can see from this is the mistletoe has invaded that stem and it is now part of the wood. You can see the different colors there. Now that's not actually a root, that's actually more like a modified stem, which means you have to cut that stem off in front of the mistletoe. The branch will fall off and you will get rid of the mistletoe. It'll probably come back, you might have to watch the tree, but it will take care of the problem. But just remember, it's not a problem because it's not a full parasite. It's not taking sugars from the tree. It's only taking the water, what's dissolved in the water from the tree. You see it's green, so it's, it's producing its own sugars. So your take home is that if you really want both, you just have to give that plant a little bit more water and definitely the birds will thank you for that. Now to wrap things up, here are five easy steps from Dr. Dave so that you can have your own mistletoe in your yard. It's gotta be local, so, so get it as close as you can to where you are. Plant it on something that you've seen mistletoe growing in. It doesn't have to be an indigenous plant. It can be exotics. Squeeze out the seed. It's, the fruit has got to be really quite soft. And now this is a critical bit. Pencil thick or thinner is the, is the branch that you're going to stick the seed on. And it needs to be on the underside, not on the top, but underneath. So that way when there's dew, when there's moisture in the air, it will rehydrate those sticky threads and that will give it a water source until it's tapped into the plumbing system of the tree. And it needs to be in a well-lit area. So sunny, underside, pencil, local, freshly squeezed from a, a, a ripe, squidgy fruit. And you've generally got about a one in 10 chance. So if you want a mistletoe, plant 10 seeds. If you want 10 mistletoes, plant 100 seeds. There are a whole bunch of facts that I did not get to about the mistletoe. If you have one that you thought of, that you knew, that I thought I was gonna say and didn't, leave it down in the comments below. Um, there's also a lot of legends and lores about mistletoe that differ depending on where you live in the world. I didn't get to pretty much any of those, especially the kissing traditions, but I wanna hear how you use mistletoe, so leave that down in the comments below. And if you still are here and you wanna watch another Stone Age Man video, 
click on one of these. Also, a big thank you to my patrons who are helping support this wildlife and nature education. I couldn't do it without you. See you in the next video. I hope you're learning more about mistletoes. Bye.